video number two of the nine part video series on understanding your patterns using the Enneagram and today's video is on type two which is the helper type. So I know for a fact that a lot of people in the world have a helper pattern so it's really typical you know unless we're like psychopaths or something seriously wrong with us most of us will be living our lives helping people around us and being there for people which is brilliant you know we don't want to change that that is fantastic with the helper pattern what i'm talking about here is more in relation to the extent to which we help other people and the context in which we do it and also the feelings that come up around doing it so the best way to describe it is you know for example if you're helping somebody and you know you're giving so much of yourself and you're really giving with all of your heart, that's a great way to be. But if you're doing it from a place that, you know, of exhaustion or depletion or something else, it's a really hard thing to sustain. And when you go around helping people, when you don't have the energy to give, it can, you know, really backfire and cause a lot of problems in your life. So and I'll give you an example, a real life example from my own life. Um, I very much resonate with this helper type. Obviously, I'm a coach, so it, it's in my nature to want to help people. But um, you know, back you know, sort of a few years ago, I would I would have gone around helping other people, um, friends, family, whoever, um, but in a way that it was I, I'd be putting their needs ahead of my own. So you know, it would be like if I'm exhausted or stressed or dealing with my own stuff in my life and somebody would call me or you know ask for help or just you know be going through something it would be like I would automatically drop everything that I'm feeling and focusing on and I'd put myself completely at the service of other people now that's maybe a good trait to have in some ways but in other ways it's not you know, it's like if you're not looking after yourself and you're not making yourself a priority most of the time, it, it leads you to be completely depleted and lacking in energy. So, you know, this is the whole thing about being a helper, you know, and often when you're somebody that gives with all of your heart and gives everything, um, it's hard to have that matched back to us because we're giving at such a high level. Most of the time, we're not going to receive the same level because I'm talking like it's up here. Um, and then what, what that can cause is a whole load of resentment or you know even anger. There's, there's something that kind of can bubble under the surface where we feel like we're not acknowledged and we're not appreciated, but it's because we're giving to such a high extent. And it's like we're doing that to feel, fill something that's maybe missing inside of us. So check it out and ask yourself, do you recognize that you're a helper? If you help people, then great, but how do you do it? Do you do it so that you're almost like running on empty? Do you help people to the point that you completely neglect your own needs? You know, I am I used to be the world's best expert at neglecting myself. I was highly specialized in this, you know, and it wasn't until I worked on this pattern and again recognized that it was a good quality to have but worked on it so that you know I'm taking care of myself as well so you know have a look into your own life and see are you always saying yes to people as well because that's another trait it's like are we always saying yes because we fear people thinking that you know we're selfish or we worry that we're not giving enough you know, are we always saying yes because we think that we're just not good enough by just being here in the world without having to prove ourselves to other people? And I think a really important kind of way to approach this is to recognise when we're just saying yes automatically, you know. There's a lot of guilt that comes up with helper tendencies. So it's very often that, you know, if we say no or if we politely decline or make an excuse, we might get ourselves out of the situation and recognize that we can't do everything. But maybe we're sitting there left with a whole load of guilt. You know, maybe we just feel so bad about ourselves because we haven't helped, we haven't done what we should have done. 
we haven't done what we know what we can do. So ask yourself if you're feeling guilty because that's a real sort of signal to yourself that this is a pattern maybe that isn't serving you as much as it can. So with the helper pattern, it's not that we're looking to eradicate it <laughs> or stop helping people or anything like that. It's just about helping somebody and people, but also helping ourselves. So, you know, this this um, expression is has been said a million times, but I think it's really worth repeating here, is that, you know, when we're flying, what do we get told? We get told, if an emergency happens, put your own oxygen mask on yourself before you turn around and help the person next to you. So I think that's really valid. If we are, you know, if we can't breathe ourselves, how are we gonna help our loved ones? How are we gonna help our friends, our children, our partners, um, if we're suffocating ourselves, you know? So think about it in your own life. You know, if, if you're strong and you're coming from a place that you're really nurtured and nourished and looked after, how much more can you help people? You know, you, you've got more capacity to really get out there in the world and do what you love doing and helping people. But if you're running on empty, it's going to be, you know, it's going to fizzle out quite quickly. Um, and this is what I learned. You know, I, I burnt myself out um, really, really awfully. And I used to always put my needs last. I didn't even think about what it is that I wanted. So take a look at this and recognize, you know, I always say the word recognize, recognize if this is a pattern that you run, you know, understand it because there are lots of ways we can, you know, as I always say, there's lots of ways you can work on it and change it and tweak it to make it serve you. But until you recognize that it's a pattern, it's really easy to be stuck in the situation. So number one thing, always self-awareness, notice if this is a pattern that comes up for you. Notice the emotions that come up as well. If you have resentment, anger, guilt, even irritation, notice that because that's a sign as well that your giving, your, your giving is exceeding what you're giving to yourself and what you're getting back. So again, acknowledge if it's in you, if you notice this pattern in other people around you. Um, you know, it's all around us. There's, most of us do help. It's just to what extent. So that's Enneagram type two, the helper type. Um, so comment if you have any comments or message me, contact me, if this is something you'd like to look at as well, um, and just be aware. So next video will be on type three, which is the achiever, the achiever pattern. So I'll talk to you again in that video soon. So until then, take care of yourself. Um, yeah, and look after yourself as always. Take care.